few game developers have made an impact in the gaming industry like ID Software. With a smorgasbord of genre-defining franchises like Commander Keen, Wolfenstein, Doom, and Quake, ID Software founded in 1991 by four founders, Adrian Carmack, John Carmack, oddly of no relation to Adrian, Tom Hall, and John Romero built the juggernaut ID Software, which would later be acquired by ZeniMax, and today is owned by Microsoft as part of Bethesda. Now I could do a retrospective on virtually every ID Software title produced, and perhaps one day I will. There are basically no bad ID Software games. Even the ones which didn't release to critical acclaim are not objectively bad games. ID Software just really knew what they were doing when it came to video games. Now ID Software have partnered with a variety of publishers over the years, and their IP has been re-released by even more publishers. However, today we're going to take a look at a title that was republished in 2019 by NVIDIA of all people. Now the game, Quake 2 RTX, is essentially the original Quake 2 experience, but with some minor tweaks, a flare gun, more on this later, and notably a new in-game lighting engine designed to be taken advantage of by modern hardware. Given the similarities outside of the visuals, I'm going to be focusing this retrospective on what made the original Quake 2 PC version memorable, but I will digress towards the end of the video to take a look at the RTX specific changes. All the footage you're seeing here is taken from the RTX version though. So while the RTX version of Quake 2 is available exclusively for PC, not all of the original versions were only available for PC. The developers clearly subscribe to the mantra that when you're on a good thing, bring it to as many people as possible. That's exactly what they did with Quake 2. Quake 2 was released for just about every platform in the late 90s. PC, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, Mac OS, and even more obscure platforms like the Amiga PC and the Zebo. Yeah, link in the description if you're wondering what exactly a Zebo is. Now, this was a time that PC still reigned supreme in the gaming experience. And while these ports sold fairly well, they released to mixed reviews, never really capturing the exact success that the original PC version enjoyed. But it wasn't just ports that we got of Quake 2, we also got a mixture of official and unofficial expansion packs for the PC release, which added new content in the way of levels, enemies, and weapons. Like the first installment in the series, the developers made it very easy for anyone with some programming skills to create mods for the game, new skins, maps, and so on. These were distributed often on magazine CDs or on the internet. Today, Quake 2 is available for a variety of platforms at a pretty much bargain basement cost, and the good news is, despite some mechanics not aging as gracefully as others, you'll still get a very playable, enjoyable game. Before we continue, a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel. If you do enjoy this content, please do consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel. With that out of the way, let's jump on a dropship, head down to Planet Strogos, and remember Quake 2. Now you'd expect gameplay from the people who virtually invented the first person shooter to be solid, and of course it is. Quake 2 offers both a robust single-player campaign and a slew of multiplayer modes, which I'm pleased to say, even today in 2023, are still active if you're playing on one of the re-releases of the game. Now, story-wise, you're going to get more information from the game manual than the actual game, and that's okay, this was the 90s after all. You do get some pixelated cutscenes between the game's areas, but these are fairly light on content. The Quake 2 story feels like it wouldn't be out of place in a Steven Seagal movie. You essentially take the role of a marine, simply called Bitter Man, thankfully no relation to Slender Man, who is part of a large preemptive strike on a cybernetic alien race that's terrorizing the galaxy called the Strog. Did I mention that planet's called Strogos and the process to convert an unwilling human into a Strog is called Strogification? Yeah, about the only thing missing is a Stroganoff. So anyway, surprise, surprise, the strike on struggles doesn't quite go to plan, and the majority of your team are either killed or captured and slated for the aforementioned strogification. Enter your character to save the day and rid the galaxy of this threat. Now, Quake 2 was one of the first mainline titles to use a more detailed objective system to help propel the player across its narrative experience and mission structure. This period in gaming saw the end of the simple collect the blue key to unlock the blue door, and move to something more like a collect the data disk to access the prison block. Actual objectives with purpose immerse the player a lot more than some type of easter egg hunt for colour coded keys to unlock random coloured doors. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the games that came before it, they were products of their time and often very good ones, but Quake 2 definitely felt like a point in time where things got more immersive in this regard. 
In saying that, I hope you like backtracking because Quake 2 has plenty of it. Now this isn't all bad because there is purpose to the backtracking. There are levels which require you to enter them, obtain an item, and then traverse back to a previous level to complete an objective with this item before returning again. What makes this a lot more tolerable is the movement speed of your character, who even with auto run off, practically sprints everywhere. In most FPS games of this era, I normally have auto run on, but with auto run on in Quake 2, I actually started suffering some mild motion sickness thanks to the breakneck speed of the character and the camera sway. In terms of pacing, the game delivers this area in spades. The first few areas of the game are basically designed to familiarise you with the systems and combat with trash enemies that are easily dispatched, but this steadily starts to ramp up as you progress through the game's roughly 10 hour campaign. There's some moderately advanced AI for the era in Quake 2, with enemies not just rushing towards you like the mindless minions they are, but rather trying to move to strategic positions to get a good light of sight on you. It's not mind blowing, but for the time it was a nice touch. There's also a mechanic that sees some enemies continue to shoot you as they lay down on the ground before you finish them off. I'm actually embarrassed to say I actually died to this once, simply because I couldn't work out who was shooting at me. Maybe it was because I was operating on about 2 hours of sleep, or maybe because it was a challenging mechanic, I guess we'll never know. Of course there's the ability to select from different difficulty levels, which among other things change the accuracy and speed of enemies, but the biggest difficulty I actually encountered was running out of ammo for my favourite weapons. Now granted I just came off a playthrough of Painkiller, which basically thrusts endless supplies of ammo on the player, but in Quake 2 I wouldn't say ammo is sparse, but I would say that you need to be aware of it, because when you're left to deal with mobs of highly mobile enemies with only grenades, you're in for a pretty rough time. Overall though, it's a pretty nice resource mechanic, which kept me on my toes. Speaking of ammo, Quake 2 does share some of its ammo types over multiple weapons, of which you have 11. You start the game equipped with a blaster, which is a small weapon doing very low damage, but the bright side is that it does have unlimited ammo. I'll be honest, after about the third or fourth level, this is really pretty useless, and in fact the only use that I had for this later in the game was shooting its projectile to illuminate dark areas. Next up you have the shotgun and the super shotgun, which thankfully you get pretty early on in the adventure. The shotgun is going to carry you through most of the early segments of the game, and I'm convinced if there was more ammo available, the super shotgun would carry you through the entire game. Both have a satisfying pump action, with the super shotgun consuming two shells per shot, but doing substantially more damage than two regular shotgun shots. From the shotgun you have the machine gun and the chain gun, both made available at similar times in the campaign, and once you get the chain gun you have pretty much no reason to use the machine gun, as it's such an objectively better gun. The recoil alone on the machine gun is what the stuff of nightmares is made of, so yeah, just stick with the chain gun, which when used in short bursts is an absolute beast. I generally love using grenades and grenade launchers in games, but Quake 2's implementation of these weapons just doesn't really float my boat. It's something about the physics of the grenades I think, it just doesn't make the player feel like they have very good control over them. And before you rush down in the comments to remind me this was the early days of 3D FPS gaming, Duke Nukem 3D released a whole year earlier with a much more tactile and satisfying pipe bomb weapon. I mean the grenades and grenade launcher are okay I guess to clear out mobs of lower level enemies, but half the time I found myself getting absolutely caned by enemy fire while just trying to line up a good throw or shot. Now from zero to hero we come to the rocket launcher, which is a thoroughly satisfying weapon to use. This thing does a lot of damage, landing either a direct hit or leveraging splash damage from a floor or wall hit. About the only thing it's not suited to is fast moving enemies, as they can dart out of your sights before the rocket travels to its intended target. But yeah, overall a very solid weapon. The Hyper Blaster is an energy based weapon that like the super shotgun, I'm convinced you could push through the entire game with if the ammo was more abundant. The high damage rate and good rate of fire do a great job of dispatching the more mobile higher level enemies, with the one downside being it does have a slight cooldown time after you take the finger off the trigger each time, but certainly not enough to be an inconvenience, more just something you need to account for. Now after making your way about halfway through the game and having to deal with the practically hit scanning gladiator enemies with a railgun mounted to their shoulder, you finally pick up your very own railgun. And while ammo is fairly limited, including the actual maximum capacity of the ammo, the damage the railgun does at practically any range is almost unmatched. You're not going to want to waste this on trash enemies, but saving it for use against some more challenging enemies is definitely a sound strategy. 
And last, but certainly not least, we come to a bit of a Doom franchise carryover, the BFG 10K. This big freaking gun is obviously the most powerful weapon in the entire game, flatlining virtually every non-boss enemy in the game with a single shot. You're not going to want to be wasteful with this weapon though, as it does share its ammo with the Hyper Blaster, but it can absolutely turn the tide in any fight. Sure, it's a bit of a novelty, but it's a damn fun novelty to use, virtually obliterating your enemies. Hey, where'd everybody go? There's also a host of power-ups throughout the game, enabling enhanced damage, the ability to traverse environmental elements without taking damage, and so on. The latter is generally reserved for hunting down the game's many secret areas, with themselves generally offering other power-ups. There's nothing quite like finding a quad damage and then entering an arena full of enemies and absolutely massacring them with your shotgun. Now, while you won't find any lush fields or tropical jungles on Planet Stroyos, the game's environments and level designs do a good job of selling their aesthetic and making you feel like you're in some Warhammer 40k grimdark world. Only instead of you running around these levels with a chainsaw, you're running around with a BFG. Now I keep calling these levels, which is actually not entirely correct. The game calls them units, each with different maps. I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep calling them levels just because it's easier for us all. So anyway, these levels will take you to many places of interest, from the military base you land at, to a jail where many of your former comrades are held, to a factory where the earlier mentioned strogification actually takes place, as well as many others. And while all of them do kind of lean into that same brown, grey colour palette, each one of them feels unique and it does a pretty good job of pulling you into the universe. Now I said earlier there was some backtracking and I want to go on to qualify that a bit more by saying that while there is a decent amount of backtracking, which for an FPS title is a little unusual, at least in this quantity, it never really felt like it overstayed its welcome because it tied everything together quite nicely with Quake 2's objective system, which you can conveniently view at any time by hitting F1. Now I'll be honest, I didn't have time for this game growing up, and the objective system and backtracking is probably one of the reasons, and probably one of the reasons I never actually went on to finish the game. But over 20 years later, and I have both more patience and more appreciation for world building, so this time it really didn't feel like a chore at all. What I do remember from the game growing up though was the huge amount of gore that it had. While other shooters of the same era, like Goldeneye, barely had any concept of showing visible blood, Quake 2 dialed this up by a factor of 10, with your adversaries being able to be literally blown into chunks of meat right before your eyes. Look on the mask, good my boy. Yeah, risky stuff for the 90s. Graphically, the game holds up remarkably well, and even without the RTX add-on, the level design and geometry help to sell the very art style of Quake, and yeah, art styles are timeless. Now, outside of the revised lighting and effects engine with the RTX re-release, you also get a flare gun to help illuminate areas that are now virtually pitch freaking dark due to the real-time lighting effects. It's not perfect though, and I definitely died at least once in literally in the middle of the dark, wondering what on earth just killed me. Overall though, the visual presentation is still good, even considering the game's age. Sound design and soundtrack is where things get a little unusual, at least for playing the game in modern times. While the original Quake 2 had somewhat of a legendary soundtrack produced by artist Sonic Mayhem, the most recent re-releases all strip out this otherwise awesome soundtrack, opting to keep the original ambient sounds in the game instead. Hunting through YouTube, there's actually a post by the original artist letting people know that they're in communication with current publisher Bethesda, but they don't have any insight into when, if at all, the soundtrack will return. While you will notice the absence of a memorable soundtrack in the re-release, all of the other sound effects are intact, and for those diehard fans, tracking down an old physical version is the only surefire way to get this soundtrack at present. So without a doubt, Quake 2 is a bona fide classic, with many of the mechanics and graphic engine elements carrying over to the 1999 multiplayer focus sequel, Quake 3 Arena. While players would have to wait till 2005 to continue the story of Quake 2 with Quake 4. Although there hasn't been a new entry in the Quake franchise in many years, with Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda and the amount of historic franchises currently being revisited, it's hard to imagine we've seen the last of Quake. I'll be back. But that's enough from me. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.